Hi guys, welcome to Daddy Dice Crafty Corner. Happy 4th of July, everybody. I wanted to come on and wish you guys a very happy and safe 4th of July today. And I thought while I was on, I'd go ahead and show you a very small Simon Says stamp haul that I just received. Um, I just picked up a couple of items, but I also wanted to explain one of them because I was actually emailed by a lovely viewer who wanted to know the differences. So I went ahead and picked up both of them to show you. Okay, so as in case you don't know, you can get $5 off your purchase if you use the code CHERRY from Simon Says Stamp. So that'll save you $5 off your shipping. That's awesome right there, right? So the two stamp sets that I picked up, and I'm going to butcher this name, I can tell you right now, I've been wanting for quite a while. You guys know I'm really into watercoloring, but I really love my Copic coloring, and I'm really into flowers lately. So... Um, this one is, I'm gonna, not going to be able to say it, it's from the Beautiful Bouquets from W Plus 9, and this one is the Ranoculus, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring that up so you can see it right there, or right there, okay, haven't stamped it out yet, I'll be stamping it out a little bit later on today. And then the other one I picked up is also from the Beautiful Banquets um, line from W Plus 9, and this is the Dahlias. Really, really pretty. So this one has Dear Friend, From Me to You, which is awesome. Hello, and this one is With Thanks for All You've Done. Now I'll probably cut that apart. Yeah, I probably will. So I can just do With Thanks and do that for All You've Done if I want to. And aren't they pretty? Love them. And then this actually, I was going to get more of the Distress Watercolor cardstock. You guys know this is actually my favorite watercolor medium so far, except for the, um, hold on, let's need to go see, um, the Bristol Smooth cardstock. I love this for ink blending and for the, um, real brush the zig real brush markers so that's my favorite for that but as far as watercoloring really my preference is the tim holtz distress watercolor paper so and i've mentioned that in quite a few videos and someone recently asked me what's the difference between ranger watercolor paper and the tim holtz distressed watercolor paper i went ahead and ordered both of them thinking i would do a side-by-side -side review and then of course i went ahead and um read up on it on the website. Here's the news, guys. I'm sure you may already know it. There's absolutely no difference. When this, this was already out and about when this came around and this was cut into the A2 size cards. So it came pre-cut, right? But they're actually the exact same watercolor paper. And if you look at it side by side, the only difference you can see is that when it's in this eight and a half by 11, or at least this batch, the um the designs kind of go this way you know the the texture in the paper kind of goes this way across the paper where on this one the texture kind of goes down but if you turn it this way and look at them they are identical and they are identical on the other side also from what i can tell in and out of the package they are just as white now that's one of the reasons why i like the distress cardstock um is because it's super white. The other card stocks are vanilla in color. They're an off-white, a beigey off-white color. So I like this because sometimes, as you guys know, I love to leave my um, edges white. I like to have some white space on my stuff. So this is super white, so it'll match my card stock if it's not my whole base, and I love it. So there, now you know, these are exactly the same. So if you are on one of your sites ordering it, and you can't find the Distressed Watercolor paper, but you can find the Ranger. They are absolutely the same paper. And I did get that straight from the source. So um, there you go. Now, I did use a sheet of this last night um, as well just to test it. I already had some of this pre-cut. I was just running low. So what I do is I buy it by the 8.5 by 11. I go ahead and cut it into my... Um, well, actually, I may leave a couple of pieces big is what I normally do but most of them I cut down into the um, five and a half by four and a quarter size and then I just keep them stored in my watercolor 
drawer so I can just grab it when I need it. So I did take a, I already had a sheet of this, I took a sheet of this and I did do some watercoloring last night to just kind of test it out. Because I'm going, if you can see by my dirty hands, girls, mm -hmm, I'm going to be doing some um, ATC cards. I've never done them before. I was absolutely inspired by a hashtag comment kindness video that I saw from Peg, um, Peg Robbins, Roberts, Peg. Oh goodness, I'm going to look it up real quick because I want you guys to know. Her video was awesome. Now, ATCs, I've, I, when I first heard about them, when I first started crafting, there were a few words in there that completely scared me to death. The first one was, um, you know, artist. <laughs> I am not an artist. At least at that time, I didn't call myself an artist, right? And the reason that I didn't was because I didn't feel like what I did was artistic. I'm now changing my views on how I feel about myself and what I do. Um, I believe anything that we sit down to do is artistic. Doesn't have to mean it's, you know, the the best that's out there because that's, that's in your own head what's the best that's out there, right? So I'm changing my views on that. Um, so, and then the other thing that, um, the other part to that was when I looked up what artistic trading cards were, what it was all about, it was about people collecting um, these ATCs, collecting them, displaying them in books and doing all that. And as you guys know, I don't really like to um, store things and do all of that. You know, I kind of like to keep things plain and simple, just have enough on hand to work with pass it along. I'm not really into the whole, um, you know, collecting. That's the word. I'm not very much into the collecting. But when I saw the video, the hashtag kindness video, something hit me. Something got me. And it, they're beautiful. I've, I've watched tons of videos on them and they are absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful to look at. And because I'm also not a messy crafter, I thought, oh, most of them are, you know, multimedia. They're not multimedia. They're, um, you know, they're different textures, different things and all of that. Or they were extremely artistic. So like I said, both of those things kind of got me, right? So... I thought about it then and then didn't do it, but I was so inspired this week when I saw this video and I actually watched Peg do all of her, um, all of her distress, all of her, um, I'm looking for her name. I want to get her last name right, guys. Yes, her name is Peg Robinson. And that's R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. So she did the hashtag Comic Kindness campaign. And she showed her ATCs um, from, I believe, a, a swap or, or some kind of thing that she would that she's she's she does. Now she does these the ATCs all the time. I knew this. But like I said, there were a few words involved in ATC. <laughs> the whole fact that they were originally created you know, by an artist to put on display. And, you know, that was a little intimidating for me, right? That it was artist quality, you know, that sort of thing. But I've changed my mind. So I'm going to dig in and do some of these. I'm actually, so yesterday, last night, I used this wa this paper on these watercolors. I did a few watercolors. I used the smooth side, not the, um, not the other side. And, um, there was no difference in how this would work or how this would work. They worked exactly the same. So then I tried them on Distress. Do I, do I have these over here or did I save the Distress ones? Um, I did Those I did the other day on the Strathmore paper. I did some backgrounds for... All right, so these are some of the ones. I did some for cards as well. All right. So I did them with the Distress Crayons and it worked exactly the same. I did it with Distress Inks. These are the Oxide Inks, which by the way, you guys are right. If you don't add water, they're not as chalky. I don't mind them at all. So I'm gonna have to revisit that. 
these are going to be for a couple of cards I'm making. And then I also did it with some of the texture paste um, and it worked the same. So they are both identical. So these are some of the little cards that I made up. I'm going to do some in watercoloring. I did this whole sheet before, this whole sheet right here before, and I saved half of it for a card, which is why I did it. So I'm going to use these. I'm going to use that, which is watercolor. Um, these are distressed crayons blotted out. And then these are all texture paste. And I really like the way that one turned out with the, you know, with the kind of smoked out white in between. I did some flowers because you guys know. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be dressing them up and doing different things with them. So I'm so excited to start this. So if you don't know about um, ATCs, by all means, please go visit Peg's page, um, Peg's YouTube page, because she she's awesome at it, guys. She's super awesome at it. Um, but what I have learned is they need to be two and a quarter by three and a half. That's the size. That's the only really mandatory thing about them is the size. And um, you can go on Google and type in ATC labels and you can actually print out labels to put on the back of them if you want to have a nice label on the back that says what you've named it. Um, they're usually done in sets and like I said, they're usually traded. So um, I'm going to ask a few of my favorite ATC makers if they would, you know, please share a, share one of theirs with me um, that I can keep in a small book because I'm really not into large, you know, quantities of things. And, um, and then I will, if they want, I'll send them one as well. Um, I'm, I'm excited to start this process. One, um, mixed media, that's the word I was looking for. Mixed media I, I do it in my own journals. I do have journals that are personal to me that reflect how I'm feeling or the anxiety or a little bit of depression or different things that I have throughout, you know, the months and years or whatever. So I don't really share those with you guys because to me they're personal, right? Um, but I'm going to try to start doing that more often. But I do do some um, mixed media in those. I do it all the time. But it's not one of my favorite things to do because I don't like having stuff underneath my fingernails and having my fingers be dirty for two days afterwards and stuff, you know? And I don't like the mess it creates on my workspace. But I am going to do it anyway. So I got myself some um, hospital gloves, you know, just to, to help with that and some wipes to wipe off my desk as I go. And that's what I was doing last night. I just did each project one at a time, cleaned up after it. And I'm super excited to start this process. The other thing I'm really, really interested in right now is acrylic pour overs. Talk about messy. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you. I, I am watching a certain YouTuber for that as well. Anne Marie Riddlehoff, Hoff, Riddlehoff, Anne Marie Riddlehoff. I'll have both of their YouTube channels posted below, but the acrylic pour overs you know, first of all, it's going to be ungodly expensive to start that project and really, really messy. So, but they are beautiful. If you haven't already seen some, please go check her out. I'm going to tell you right now, they are gorgeous, gorgeous. So, yeah, so that's what I have in my head right now for things I want to start. The pour overs are going to be a little bit further down the road. Um, I've got to wrap my head around it and get supplies. I'm not going to go out and buy everything all at once, of course. I'm just going to buy a few things here and there, and but I'm so inspired by her videos to try it on a smaller scale, small canvases, not large canvases, but small ones, just to see. They are so beautiful, so very beautiful. So that's all that's going on with me today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic 4th of July. I hope you're going to go out and do something fun with someone you love, having the best time you can. And being kind to everyone you see and um, safe that's a big thing you know be very safe today guys I want to see you back here on YouTube tomorrow so be very safe I love you all and I hope you have a great day bye